That one tree that you knocked down, the big tall one? Yeah. Was, there was a squirrel living in it. He ran out. He was so scared. There was a squirrel? There was a squirrel living in it. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Is that his little hole? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. He ran out. He, he went all along the canopy. He was so scared. Aww. Oh, I feel bad. Yeah, me too. Oh, man. Is there a little hole? There's a hole. No, it's not that hole. There's another hole somewhere that I saw. It was like a big hole. Well, I mean, he could still find it. It's just down on the ground now. Poor guy. It probably took him like a year to do that. Yeah. I mean, that looks pretty epic right there. Huh. No, it wasn't that section. It must be this section. There was a hole in it. It's all right. He'll, he'll find it again. All right. What we're doing today, I got the tank here. I think the safest way to clear dead areas like this is get yourself in a big steel box and push stuff over. So that's what we got the skid steer up here for. I'm just pushing stuff around. This stuff is dead. We are gathering some more cedar. We quickly ran out of cedar of the appropriate size to do the milling for the solar kiln. So we're looking at the area that we have to clear for the solar field and we're seeing which trees we're gonna take out immediately and seeing if any of those are the appropriate size to, to fell and then, and then mill. There's one over there. Last time I talked about a black walnut that we're gonna be keeping. Watch these uh, wine berries. Okay, right here, black walnut. Double trunk, really nice healthy size. We just like them, right Meg? Yeah, they have really pretty leaves. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna spare this one, but everything else around it is pretty much gonna go so that we could harvest the sun rays. Um, and the one tree that I do have in mind is this one here. This nice big one. Can you come over here, Meg? Cedars always have these like really gnarly bottom branches that stay on the tree forever. They don't fall off really. They really, you gotta be careful walking in the forest with these things around, not to trip and whatnot. And just identifying them, you'll see that pink, even on the little branches that have passed a long time ago. So the wood definitely has anti-rot properties to it. Um, but anyway, we're gonna take this one and the challenges of Milling something like this is all of the little indentations along the bar. It's not like a smooth hardwood on the outside. It's, you know, you see this like really big tree, but you really got to bring it in quite a bit. I call it the blubber. I don't know what it's called. Um, what did you call it, Meg? Oh, it's the butt cracks. The butt cracks of the tree. So we got one here. It's like all around. And when you get it on a sawmill and you do a pass, then you can kind of calculate how far you need to drop your, your blade to make another pass so that you get rid of those and get start making some good boards. But um, it seems like it's not an ideal species to mill for that reason if you want like a good structural piece, like if you're gonna do your deck out of it. So anyway, um, I definitely don't wanna send this tree that way toward the black walnut and I'm looking at the branches of the walnut and uh, I don't know which way I'm gonna go with it yet, but all the trees over here behind this thing are gonna to go too for the solar. So maybe we should just be proactive and drop those too. Just get it done and uh, leave them down, just get them out of the way and then we'll harvest this one for the lumber. All right. Cool. Let's do it. I think it'll go quick. We got like three or four we just gotta take down. So there's a, yeah, just this group of trees over here, right here. We'll remove these and some of these look like they should be a decent size to mill like this one here this is a nice one that's at least 13 inches and the one that i was talking about over there looks like it could be about 15 so that would give us a really good yield all right so i'm going to just i'm nervous about taking the trees and dropping them this way and being over here because there's a bunch of dead trees up there I'm just gonna do a little shake, rattle, and roll on those trees and see if we could get some pieces to fall so that I don't 
get hit or anything when I'm dropping these trees with the chainsaw. Way, 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 way down that hill, our neighbor actually has horses in this uh, field. Oh, well, I don't know if you want to call it a field because it's woods, but there are horses down there. They could come up to the gate, to the fence here, if they wanted to. Let's just move on. Let's drop the cedars. That thing is obviously a lot more intact than it looks. Yeah. So, well, there you go. Mountain Fur Express. How high are they going to go? How far will she go? That's it. Oh, it's so windy, John. <laughs> That's the problem with cedars. So many branches to get caught on. What if we got rid of these two first? Like, just throw a chain on it and pull them out that way. All right, Meg's got me hooked up here. Got the rock bucket. You can see the chain on the tree.
point out. Meg knows how to tie up a log, but you gotta wait for her. She puts on all the safety gear, she whitens her teeth. <laughs> nah, she don't do that. Meg is naturally beauty. All right. Whoa. So you put your gloves on. What about your glasses, Meg? Hard cat? Sometimes. No? You got enough room there? What if I said no? I'd make more room. <laughs> I'd move the earth for you, Meg. <laughs> there you go. That's using your noodle. <laughs> All right. All right. So if we get this one down, we can safely drop the that one. one. Oh, that one and that, that one. one that direction which is the way it wants to go but there was a vine on this one which we were afraid it was going to interfere with dropping it we really don't want to mess up that black walnut if you could even see it in there all right here you go Meg. we're revealing it Carl slowly pushing it. one right, tree at a time on. let's see what john can do it doesn't even look like a cedar
wasn't really necessary to pick up the tree. I really felt like a character in Mortal Kombat. Like the finishing move. Was, you know what I mean? Is that yeah. the finish him? Yeah, maybe it's a guy thing. Is that the finish him? I don't know. They always do something like fatality. You know? Like one guy rips his head off, another one like grabs his heart out. I don't know. Okay. Let's drag this thing out of the woods. Where's the chain? I put it somewhere. It's right there by that tree. Okay. I got an idea. You know all those boulders over there that we ripped up out of the ground? Say, so what are we going to do with them all? So this is going to be our solar field, right? It goes downhill. What if we use those? At, because I'm thinking this is all going to get cleared out and we're going to have grass here. Plant some really nice grass all along here. Mm -hmm. Have a nice yard that we can enjoy. Uh -huh. But then we could line up the boulders, like arrange them, like stack them a couple levels high and backfill up to them so it's like a repainting wall. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, boom, woods. And then it goes like into the woods. It gives you a line where it's grass, rocks, and then woods go downhill. So like define the yard? Define the yard. And the other thing is we have that zero turn mower and I'm looking at this grade down here. It'll be a little tricky to mow over there unless it's like more flattened out. But like yeah. as soon as we clear all these trees that we're going to do, we should really grade the way we want it to mm -hmm. so that the grass looks really nice and smooth, flat. Uh -huh. No, nothing like abrupt that's going to give Before you the chance. grass grows and then we can't grade it. Right. Yep. You like that idea? Sure. Okay. Wow. Look at our sky over here, Meg. Yeah, we got more sky. That's for sure. Wow. We're getting there, boys. Boys? I don't know what that Who are you talking to? There's three girls over here. Fresh in there. Okay, let's put the chain on. Yank it out of there. We made a mess again, of course. But. Look at that pretty walnut that we uncovered. We still want to take out that cedar. That one will be next, but we got three big ones out and cleared out. And this area is looking like a lot more sky now, even more so once we get that one out. So it's opening up. We have a lot of branches to clear up. And then we have more of a mess over here now. John pulled all of them over to there and there. But see, see where the sun is? That's why it's, it's opening up and it's winter. So even though the sun's right there in the middle of that walnut, in the summer, it'll be up higher. So we'll, we'll get past that walnut without a problem. And in the winter, it pretty much goes through, so we got a good plan. It's coming together. Okay guys, I've said it once, I'll say it again, I'll say it 14 more times. Ricky is a beast. Look at these things. Alright, he's no match for the skid steer, but that grapple bucket is oversized and it's loaded. Where's my tape? Oh man. Alright, this is the tree we just took. Uh, we took it where the solar panels are going to be going. It was near the walnut tree that we are sparing. But this cedar, look at the size of this thing. I mean, it, I don't know. just doesn't do justice what I'm trying to show you here. But anyway, Ricky, the little 24 horsepower tractor that could, brought it all the way down 200 feet in altitude change. 
<laughs> third of a mile down a muddy trail and uh yeah he got it we're gonna be milling some cedar now i ran out of some i ran out of logs i mean i'll get these next to the ones i'm sitting next to these here um those are not very big <laughs> I mean, I get a couple two by fours out of them. So I needed to get a tree that I could actually, you know, really start producing some lumber with. So we decided to go for this big one that was in the way that was bound to come down anyway, so we could mill it up. Um, and I thought what I might do is just get it on the mill, cut it a bit and uh, talk to you throughout the process. Cedar's a little challenging, but it's kind of like a pleasure to work with too at the same time. But uh, before I get into that, I got an idea. So here's the situation. See it? My favorite thing, mud. Lots of mud. It's not that bad. I'm not like sinking into the ground, but you know, Ricky's got some dirty shoes, okay? So this is what we're dealing with. This mud is for uh, more like sandstone mud stuff. Uh, last episode, I discussed what the heck to do in this area, right? And the answer was right in front of me the whole time, guys. So this right here, the sawdust. Now I was gonna lay down bark, right? Like that stuff or wood chips, wood chips. Uh, I don't have any on hand right now. But anyway, I was, um, I was over here, right? By my little table thing here. And this pile, this is ash. And I cut it up. This is from my kids just gathering a pile of sawdust and playing with it, making sand castles, but they were like sawdust castles. And I walked over it and it was just a delight. And it compacted nicely and it was good. I think another one was up over here at some point, but I think I made Autumn clean that up. Anyway. So yeah, it was it was just sitting here and I got plenty of it. So I made all this cedar. I cut all this cedar over here and I'm starting to get quite a pile here of sawdust. So I figured before I get anything going here, um, we're about to get rain tomorrow. So I was going to throw some of this stuff in the loader and then spread it around on the opposite side of the mill where the machines go and where I'm walking around and just kind of like the area that I'm complaining about. I mean, maybe like six feet or so, you know, that'd be fine. So I thought it'd be a good use. If it doesn't work, I could just scoop it up and throw it into the compost pile. So. Anyway, let's get these trees down, let's go get the loader, and we're going to start spreading that stuff around. Alright, Ricky, let's get these things down here. what we're after guys a bunch of two by fours so i've cut a bunch already let me show you where i'm at i got some scraps i gotta go through nothing dimensional but i could still use it anyway i got my two by fours here i have my two, uh two by eights i got three of them for the ridge board here on our little shelter and what do i got i got my beams one two three four those are the vertical beams and then I have the horizontal beams over here I got a random two by four here but um and then I just have some half inch stuff because that's going to be what I'm uh, using for the siding so whenever I get a slab that's a good half inch and I at least get four feet out of it I've been uh putting it over here but um anyway I'm going to keep this stuff out of the rain because I'm going to be using it really soon it's amazing how it just browned up yeah, there's the pink and there's the brown it's pretty stuff 
But anyway, it's difficult. It's, um, it's kind of nice to work with cedar and it's kind of a pain. That pile there is a bunch of cant and that's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of waste. Um, oh, and I got some furring strips here. I got some, um, some of the board and battens, some battens. Okay. Not boards yet, but anyway, I'm trying to be, um, not wasteful, but it's tough with cedar and this log is pretty nice, but the other one, let me run over and show you is not this, this one is kind of like a pleasure to work with. This one is relatively straight, doesn't have too much, as Meg crawls it, the butt crack. Um, I'm gonna call it blubber, you know. <laughs> Here, let me show you this one. So this is the other big one. This is the base, the base of the tree. And if you put this on your sawmill, it's kind of like scratching your head. What the heck am I supposed to do with this thing, you know? So you start your cut on the opposite end, but I mean, you gotta remember where it's gonna end up. So you have to, I mean, if you want nice boards, you got to get into this here. It's just, it's really difficult. And the whole tree is like that. These cracks, crevices, they go up the whole tree. You know, if you're lucky, you'll get one that I have on the mill right now. I mean, that's part of the challenge of picking out which trees to mill. But uh, anyway, I'll, I'll get a decent amount out of that one. But it's going to look like it's being wasted, some of it, you know, because... You just can't get a board out of this tiny little, this round section here, the way it grows naturally. So I guess you just have to be uh, ruthless and do what you got to do. that's gonna work out. Autumn, look at all the pink wood chips. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, it's cedar, you know that? Yeah. What's the matter? This is kind of a bee or something. It got trapped in some pink thread. Huh? We got trapped in a pink thread. A bee got stuck? Yeah. Well. I was trying to help him, then its wing came off. Well, I think he's gone, honey. Mm. Yeah, he's not alive anymore. Yeah. Poor guy. Yeah. Be one with the earth. <laughs> All right, no, no playing with this sand, okay? Okay. Because I'm trying to... Feels good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. With bare feet. Yep. Jump, jump, jump. Nice. You make me smile, Autumn. You feel like you're at the beach? Kind of. <laughs> I'm jealous. I want to do that. Can I do it? Yeah. <sighs> Hold on. I got to get my boots off, Autumn. You know, maybe I should just not wear shoes like you. Look, I got two, I got two pairs of socks on, Autumn. Oi. I hope Mommy looks out the window and she's like, what are they doing? Yeah, look. Honey, like don't, this. don't churn the, no, 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 don't do that. All right, let's just hop. Wait, I'm scared. Can you hold my hand? Oh, wow, that's nice. 
That was the break. Oh. Let's see how far you can go. Ready? Hold on. You gotta start back here. Do a long jump. Go ahead. I'm gonna see if I want to show you how you do it. Watch. You start and you go. Oh, that hurt my knees. There, you gotta beat that, Autumn. Yeah. All right, you get three hops to beat my one. Go. Ah, <laughs> oh, she beat it in two. <laughs> I win. I win. Oh man. I used to do this all the time playing baseball. I'd spread the dirt around like this in my position, my shortstop position, so the ball wouldn't take weird bounces. Okay, stop, stop, stop. No more shuffling it around too much. You know why I did this? Because I'm tired of the mud. So as I make more lumber, I'll get dust, and I'll dump some more down. Dad, it's snowing. Oh, okay. okay. It's not snowing. Thanks for helping me with the... Can we hop one more time? Yeah. Go! I like this part the best. Man, my feet are getting cold. How do you do this? Man. Oh well, I had fun autumn. I don't care, my totos are dirty. So part of homesteading is sometimes you gotta be outside when it is not optimal. Meg, show the conditions behind you. Mud. However, how's your sawdust working out, John? Yeah, I'll take a few steps on it. It's good. It's a little spongy. Not when you walk on it, just kind of like, look, this is a really wet area here. All right, that, that, but I'm not sinking. That's the thing. And I could add more. And it's not sticking to your boots. Right, like it's better than making this. Making them heavy. Like, it's better than this. Here, here we go. Which one would you rather be in? I don't like this. That puts me in a bad mood. Like, I just want to curl up in the fetal position and go to bed. I don't want to be out here like that. So, Autumn and I spread this out the other day. She helped me with some sweet moves. And uh, it has rained biblically. Wouldn't you say, Meg? Like, it's, all yesterday. It's rained a lot. When our creek flows in the front, it rained hard. And it's flowing. Anyway, um, let's gather some more sawdust. Because that was kind of a pain in the neck to switch to the loader and scoop all this out. Put it over here and everything else. And uh, I, I cut up a log. Put the dust down there. And I'm like, ah, I should be gathering this stuff so we can lay down some more. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Let's see if the simple approach works. So I got a five-gallon bucket. We'll see how quick it fills up. My idea is just hang it. There's like kind of like a perfect, perfect section right here that I could oh, just hang the handle. Let me come over there. Yeah. All right, look under here. This is how this thing is, guys. There's a little, there's a couple round bars going across here, which is really a pain. I've thought about removing them, and then I'm like, what if the blade breaks and comes flying out? That's probably why those are there. That's why they're there. But when you're working with cedar and you get a bunch of like hairy stuff, like all of this from the cant or the bark or whatever you want to call it coming out, this, it's just kind of a pain. So anyway, I open up the door and I am more than clear to just put a couple pan head self-tapping screws. I just got a couple of these. That'll give me a good lip to uh, hang the bucket. And this thing just fits perfect right here. Let's check for interference. All right, so you got to take the bucket off if you're going to open up. If you're going to open the door, which All right, let's put two screws in and we'll have a good time. John's paint job is chipping off. It don't matter. Put more paint on it. Look at this. Oh well. It's pretty even. Yeah. 
All right, let's, because before I had the bucket hanging, like I had a clamp on, I don't know, I just kind of rigged something together. Didn't really, because the vibration didn't play nice. So, this will fit the standard. Mill improvement. That's right. Now, if you want one of these for your mill. Don't, John. Don't what? Don't say it. $1,000? <laughs> Five hundred. I'll come. I'll come. Thousand dollars if you want me to do it. I'll install it. Because <laughs> these, right. these need special torque. Let's mill something. All right. Let's catch some sawdust, and then we'll, as this fills up, we'll just dump it over there. Because I wasted all this. Look, I cut that log, and all this nice stuff it should be over there. sawdust held the tractor nicely too look how much it like sunk in here and then mm -hmm. it came back up here yeah compacted it i say just keep filling in the sawdust yeah, keep adding to it right it's better than the mud so this is going to be a challenge yeah here's what we're working with guys look at this thing like wow. you want a nice board out of this thing but you got this big hump of whatever to get around like the blade has to get down into this crack i mean look just looking at the end of it yeah. you can see how far those cracks go in yep look at it look at that <laughs> <laughs> oh Where's my can't hook? Where's my can do? You hook? can't find your can't hook? I can't. Should probably rotate those hooks. Whoa! You're going up and over. I know I'm that I'm that awesome. <laughs> That's looking pretty even. Let's just send the blade through and try to get it flat. This is gonna be weird. Guys, you're lucky I like you. I turned the machine off so you can hear me, okay? And it's kind of a pain to get it started again. So, yeah. So listen up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look out, Maddie. All right, we gotta drop this a little bit. Okay, so now you gotta decide. See how funky looking this thing is? So this crack is, uh, I don't know what you call it. Butt crack. So this butt crack is going and going and going. And like, I don't know what you're seeing, but I could see a board right here 
possibly not too. See how wavy this is and everything? You gotta be realistic. Like what's the skinniest portion here? You could maybe get a two by six out of this. That's about it. But the thing is what you gotta decide before I flip it. Now normally I would flip this log and I'd start cutting slabs. You know, this way, this way, this way. But if I go ahead and just cut off another inch and a half of board thickness, then that's going to be removing all this junk that I don't want to have to contend with when I start cutting the slabs. Slabs, I mean the cuts before you stack them and dimensionalize everything. So I think I'm going to cut the, the extra inch and a half here. So that'll give me one board that I have to cut kind of special. And then I'll be able to rotate it 90 degrees and just go zip, 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 zip and start making some boards. I have a question. Yeah. As far as the, um, the center of the log. Yeah. That's also called the cant, right? No, that's the pith. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. This pith. here, that's the pith. I haven't really seen much of a cedar pith problem like you do in other hardwoods. Okay. Cause it didn't seem like you were avoiding the, the pith. Yeah. I mean, we're not doing huge boards. We're just doing small, like two by fours out of this stuff. It makes more of a difference if you're doing skinny boards, right? Yeah. Because okay. then, yeah. The gotcha. cupping, the warping, bending, all that stuff. Yeah. So let's do this. And when I get this board cut, now I'm going to have to figure out a straight path between this end and that end to make a cut. And then another one to remove all this stuff. So it's like, you know, it, it's worth getting rid of this stuff. It's going to set up my other boards nicely. Got a full bucket already. Put it down thick. We got plenty of that stuff. So right next to the stuff. There you go. What do I have to do? Hey, you're not in our club. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, little mountain cur? I wouldn't hide under the sawmill, honey. She's up.
thing's a pain in the butt. I don't like this thing. I've said it before, I just want to complain though. Can I say it one more time? Yep. I don't like this thing. I know. Now they're not moving. Ooh, how'd you do that? It was sticking up, I pushed it down. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. See guys, this is the difference between me and Meg. These are Meg's stickers, okay? Looks kind of like Bigfoot ran through the forest and was like, here's a sticker for you. And mine are nicely cut with the <laughs> chainsaw, not killing anybody. So again, these are my stickers down here, All right? These few. This is Meg's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, does it do the same job? It's starting to rain. Yeah. Alright, let's get this John, oh. my stickers are going to do the same thing. They may be a little dangerous and cut off your leg, but... You know what, yeah. you know what I'd be interested in, in seeing? The moisture content on it. This stuff it looks so dry when you mill it. Like it's dry to the touch, it's not sticky like pine. Yeah, because when you cut the... I'm not even running any... What? Go ahead. I was going to say, when you cut poplar yeah. and you pick it up, wet. it's wet and it's heavy. Yeah. This does seem dry. It feels dry. All right, we're going to focus on cutting up the rest of the logs behind me. We got about four more nice logs over there of cedar, and uh, we're gonna stack them. Hopefully we hit our numbers for what we're looking for to do all the framing for the structure. Um, weather looks super dicey for the next week about, but we're really gonna try to go get the railroad ties and everything else we need to start framing this thing. So hopefully next episode you'll see, you'll see us clearing that spot right next to the mill and start building this thing. So until then, I guess we'll see you next time, guys. I feel bad for the squirrel. Me too. Maybe we could uh, set up his little pole again. What do you think, give him a better view? <laughs> Mountain view? Yeah. Point him that way, he's like, ah! Poor guy. Come on, let's dig. Come on. What is this? Look, Maddie. You want to help me dig? <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? You just seen what I had for breakfast. No kisses.